Hi everyone. I want to kind of take one step further, talk about microbiology a little bit. And uh, this, this slide here and the ideas I want to talk about are really inspired by a book called The Force of Symmetry by Vincent Icke, I-C-K-E, which is a fantastic book if you're interested in kind of these subjects related to quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, things like that. Um, and really, he makes a couple points that about chemistry that are, uh, you know, we've touched on already that really explain why microbiology uh, is the way it is in some sense. And one is the distinction between the ionic bond and the covalent bond. The ionic bond is very strong, you know, it's based on electrostatic attraction. And so it has a tendency to, um, you know, be very uh, destructive almost to um, materials. It, it has a tendency to, to create pairs of things. Whereas the covalent bond is more gentle, more long range. And so that means that atoms can actually lock together, you know, um, in chains. And so you've got, you know, just like these magnets stick together two atoms can stick together through a covalent bond and um, interact very much like Legos, he says. And so, you know, that's why when we talk about microbiology and we've got these pictures, you know, you have this kind of structure which looks like, you know, you've got this tinker toy-like effect. That's really because of the nature of the covalent bond. Now also, molecules are what they are. They do not wear down. There's no such thing as an old, you know, a caffeine molecule. A caffeine molecule is what it is just by virtue of its shape and nothing more. And so, um, you know, you can't have a damaged caffeine molecule. You either have a caffeine molecule or you have something completely different, right? If, in order, if, if a caffeine molecule were damaged, then its chemistry is completely and radically altered. And so um, that allows us to, to have no ambiguity. And so it's very easy or, you know, it makes it possible to distinguish between uh, molecules and allows, you know, things to identify, um, uh, you know, what things are just by virtue of their very shape. Now also carbon, carbon has a valence of four, you know, it's got four electrons sitting in its outer shell, which means it wants to accept four more electrons. And that gives it a very powerful kind of chemistry where, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it basically means that it can make very long chains. So the carbon atom, because it has this fourfold valence, it can attach two to one side, two to the other. The carbon atom can actually attach to itself, basically, is what I'm saying. And so you get an entire chain, which is, you know, the foundation, the backbone of the DNA molecule and things like that. And, um, and so now you can start to actually construct molecules which are huge in size compared to the atom. Um, you start to bridge the gap between the microscopic and the, micros or, and the macroscopic. And this microbiology sits right on the border between what we would call quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. That this microbiology is right on the border. That's where life exists, is um, in between classical and quantum mechanics. And um, I think that's what I want to say.